morning, guys. Welcome to this week's episode, or second episode of the week, actually. Now, yeah. How did you enjoy the um, midweek episode? Let us know. Leave us a comment. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. So this week we've been super busy with some sanding, grinding, finding more suspect spots. It's um, lots and lots of sanding. Yeah. They finally <laughs> gotten rid of our trailer yeah. as well, which is super exciting. We have a big workspace now down there, which is awesome. What else have we done? Don't know all sorts. I'll tell you what, get on with it. Watch the episode. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who subscribed recently. Thank you again to all of our patrons. You are incredible. Cheers, guys. Thanks, guys. Hi, I'm Erica, and this is my fiancé, Dave. We are living aboard our new to us Hurricane Damage Catamaran, Barefoot 2.0. We met in Fiji three years ago and have experienced so many beautiful places together. For the past two years, we've made the ocean our home, starting on our Catalina 36 in the States and the Northern Caribbean. We hope to one day circumnavigate the globe, but for now we are fixing our boat one step at a time. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. When faced with a challenge, look for a way, not a way out. Davey's suiting up this morning. <clears throat> Long socks. Maybe we don't need them that high. <laughs> you gotta tuck the suit into the socks. Well, give me a chance, I haven't even unfolded it yet. I got a medium. Do you think it's gonna be too big? They're always, everything's always too big for me. Ask Eric. <laughs> I really hope Eric watches this. <laughs> <clears throat> it might not be, it might be alright. But a medium here in the Dominican Republic is more a true medium. Yeah. Whereas when you get a medium in the States, it's like a it's fit. extra large. Look at you go. Wait, can I just make one adjustment? So you want the ears out? Why do you want the ears out? <laughs> just because I think it'll look funny. <laughs> it's not very fair, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm hot already. <laughs> there you go. Hey, morning, guys. So, a little bit of an update what's going on here this morning in the yard. Uh, what I've decided to do is I want to rub down all the sides of the area. We're going to basically be repaint the whole boat. So I want to rub everything down, all the gel coat down, so it's preparing it for paint. And it also gives me the chance to inspect the hull uh, for any imperfections. So looking at the boat here, you see, it's hard to see any imperfections. You can see some of the bigger ones, but what I did yesterday, I didn't actually have the camera on. I came down this side here. And I've gone over with 100 grit paper and now she's looking so clean. Um, while I'm doing this, I'm being able to spot any imperfections. So sand this little area back. This area here, I found an imperfection. I definitely need to work more on the front here. This is a repair that's been done. Then going along the side. Also, there was obviously some scratching that went on. So I've, uh, I've started to just open things up a little bit, make things a bit cleaner so that I can see any imperfections. Still got the bigger areas of imperfections and I haven't finished going down this side. This will be this afternoon once the sun's gone away from me. I'm going to do a bit on the other side first. But I want to open up these areas a little bit more. Underneath the boat, unfortunately, we still have the damn trailer. Been here for over a week now and the trailer still hasn't been moved. As you know, we have been chopped up. But the trailer's still here, but we have been told it's going to happen today. 
So with a bit of luck, that'll be gone. A lot of the other areas that we had uh, issues with, so I've ground back a lot on the keel here. And as you can see, there was, a, there was a lot of water inside the keel. There was also a lot of osmosis spots. You can spot where the water's dripping out. So I've been grinding back, and as I'm grinding, you can see small amounts of water. So I'm actually cutting them further and back and allowing things to dry. Also on this uh, damage that we'd exposed here a few days ago, you can definitely see that there's still water inside this crack. It was never repaired properly, it was just a hot patch. Previous owner did tell us that everything below the waterline had been done correctly and professionally, but as we can see by all of these damages with water coming out of them, that is completely not true. So it's kind of the truth behind a hurricane damage boat. Still got the damage there, I can see water coming out. Definitely things are drying out. There's a lot less dripping that we've got now. Davey's been working on cleaning up the underside as well. He's done some work on the sail drive. We are gonna need to get sail drive boots for it as the original ones are no longer there. They're gonna move the tractor, or the trailer. The trailer is moving. It has a week and a half, is it? It's been in it? Yeah. Anyway. So in order to get the trailer out from underneath the boat, they're going to need to use the tractor and pull the trailer slightly to the left, as when they did put it on the boat, it wasn't quite center, so they're not able to drive it out, otherwise it'll take out one of the keels. So they're going to pull it over with the tractor and uh, hopefully it'll come right out. <laughs> she wanted to get stuck under the tractor. Don't get stuck. Oh, it's slow, slow, slow. What's that? My heart is beating so fast right now. <laughs> yeah, they are. Do that again, babe. It's out, it's finally out. The trailer is gone, we have a working space. That was the most stressful 20 minutes of my life. It takes, what, 15 people <laughs> to work out. You need to go that way a little bit. But uh, I know, they did it, they did it very did it well. slowly and they did very well, yeah. so I'm very happy with yeah. that. So it's out. It's a good job, it's out. It's, it's good. done, yeah. good. Maybe tie putting it back in again. Um, yeah. But that's not for a while, we gotta fix it first. <laughs> Yeah, but then that's when it'll be more stressful because yeah. it'll be like They'll the be most like, Do not scratch it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's a big 72 foot catamaran that's come in. Uh, it's owned by a company who works directly with Carnival Corporation. And due to COVID, they're not running right now, so they want to fix a few of their boats. They've taken the mast off and they're going to try and haul it out with these two cranes. It's 72 feet. Our little tiny 36 foot catamaran looks so tiny on the hard next to it.
We are super happy with the placement, so thank you, Isaac. We, as you can see, we are really close to the water, so we don't get too many bugs on board, and we get a nice breeze all afternoon. Hey guys, so a little bit of an update. It's a bit noisy as you can see because there is some sanding going on. I uh, thought I'd let you know what we're doing, what we're going on with. So this morning I've actually been working, if you remember back, I was making some fiberglass panels for a friend of mine. Um, so Bill, your panels are made. I'm gonna trim the edges tomorrow. Uh, so that's, that was my morning's work. And we've also got the boys here and they moved on to the other hull. It's pretty damn noisy because of the sanders, but that's the way it is. So they've stripped down most of this side here today. We've also got some water coming on board so we can have showers tonight. But uh, let's give a big shout out to the boys here in, uh, in Marina Tropical. Sanding away. Starting to look really good. The holes are starting to dry out. Where I've been working on the holes, uh, especially on the keels, there was a lot of blistering. Uh, there's actually still some water marks here, here, here. Um, but I was grinding those areas back, but they're gonna take a couple of weeks to dry out. But anyway, things are progressing. I've been doing a lot of work and I'm very, very grateful for the help of the boys here in the yard that have been getting rid of the black anti-foul paint for me. So they've done a great job. They're still working at it. We're hoping it's gonna be finished today. And then I can go on to carrying on with these areas on the boat here where I'm doing the finer sanding, just to bring it back and find out if there's actually any more damages that we can't see. Any cracking in the gel coat uh, or any other suspicious areas I'm grinding back to make sure that there's no more damages. So everything's going well, and uh, yeah, it's everyone to the grind. Alrighty then, so as you know, I've been trying to clean up this side here, the starboard side. I'm gonna show you. Um, this is where there was a crack. It started about here, came along, all the way along, then down here, and all the way along here. This looks a bit bigger than just a crack. Um, we've got the rest of the bottom paint off now and I have started by working to, to feather in. So we've got rid of all the bad glass up to this point. Um, also, big thanks to uh, Colin on Parlay Revival. If you haven't met them yet or seen them yet, check them out for sure. Um, but he's working currently on a Fontaine in, uh, in Florida. And in a lot of the damages where there's been cracks, he's told us that they have found wet balsa core. So uh, I've been doing some exploratory grinding. We haven't found any yet, but I haven't got very far. But uh, thanks for that tip, Colin. So uh, we're definitely checking on that. See if we find the same damage you're finding on the one you're working on. Uh, another thing, as you can see, the, uh, the black paint, the bottom paint has now been removed. Big thank you to the guys here in the yard that gave me a hand with that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to cleaning up so that I can find and inspect the hole. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is come back to this area because we've got our fingers crossed that a friend of ours, Rush, maybe has a tool that we can borrow. Uh, it's called a gel coat and fiberglass peeler. Um, it's quite an expensive tool. One, we can't really afford to buy one. And two, they're not available in this country. But we have fingers crossed that he's coming back from the Bahamas quite shortly. So I'm gonna leave these areas. They're quite exposed, so they are starting to dry out. Uh, but I'm gonna work on some other stuff till we know if he's coming or not before I spend hours and hours and hours trying to grind this back with the wrong tool, basically. So uh, fingers crossed and uh, let's get this boat cleaned up. <laughs> 